Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to create a spinning object. This is actually a custom spinning object. I'm still working out some of the bugs in this because even though I have this set to block, I guess it does. I thought it was blocking me there for a minute, but I go right through it, but I'll work on trying to figure that out. I can stand on it. Interesting, huh? I can stand on it, but I go right through it otherwise. So it's kind of cool. Good for getting dizzy, I guess. There's some wonkiness with this thing. Actually, if you stare at this, you, you get a little dizzy staring. At <laughs> so anyway, I'll be back in just a minute to show you how to do this. Okay, we're back. And to get started with this, we're just going to go ahead and start a new project. I'll start from scratch. This has application if you wanted to put, let's say, a custom sign or signage, spinning signage in your game, or maybe some kind of obstacle course, although I'm not sure how well that would work until I get the collision figured out. But anyway, this is get you started. This will get you started on it. So I'm going to just go with the create a blank island template here. And this is pretty straightforward to do. It relies on the move to functionality that's available. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a beam or a prop. And to do that, just be on the My Project folder and just right click and create a blueprint class. We'll do a building prop, new blueprint. And for this, all we have to do is just come up to add and add a cube. And it comes in and on this, all we have to do is go to the scale. What I've noticed is if you use this cube in here, instead of making a custom, trying to model a cube, is the pivots perfectly centered. So it'll spin completely perfect. So on scale, we can drag this up here. And you can make this any size you want. I'm just going to kind of make it a long beam kind of thing like that. And then we can make it narrower here, scale it down here, maybe quite a bit. So we'll just do something like that. And then we do have in here materials that you can choose from. Not a ton of them, but you got some that you can choose already. I haven't explored all of these, but what's this is granite tiles. So let's just do that one. And that's all we have to do, compile and save. And I believe that's going to be it. Once that's done, we can just drag it into the scene and place it wherever you want it to be. Maybe not so close to the where you spawn in. So maybe back it up a little bit. And that's all we got to do for that. Now the next thing we do is we're just going to create some verse code. So we come up to the verse explorer, left click, right click, add new. We can leave it called hello world device and go save. And then if we double click up here, our code comes in. And I'm just going to delete this because I already have the code on notepad. And I'll just go over this real briefly. Control C and then Control V. Okay. And you do need this spatial math. So by default, you'll have these three modules, but you do need this one, you need to add that if you don't have that. And so what we do here is this creates our creative device. And then at editable means that we can access it then, the whatever it is, the variable through the editor. We don't have to come into the code to change it. So we're going to create one variable of float, call it yaw, set it at 180. And you can play around with these values. You can put it at 360. I think it makes it spin a little faster. Um, edit speed, you can just leave it at three for right now. And then I'm just calling, creating a variable called boxy, which is our, our prop that we just created. And then on begin play starts everything and spawn calls an asynchronous function, which is this, which is basically just running on a different time thread. 
so it doesn't necessarily stop the flow of the game, but it does go off and do its own separate things separate from the rest of the program. And so this is just relying on things that are available within the creative prop. So if I click on K control and click into this, you'll see all the things that it is capable of doing the creative prop and it can be spawned in and it has this move to result. It's a whole world in here of things that it can do as far as dispose. I guess that's a good way to get rid of it. Uh, set a mesh, set a material, show, hide, you know, the usual suspects, but it also has this move to result, which stops it once its destination has been reached, which makes sense, right? So there's all these variables that we set, the transform, the position, the rotation, and these are required if we want to use this move to functionality. So here we call our prop and then we move to and it requires a position a rotation and a speed and the speed is this variable up here and so these are all method calls within this class of creative prop and then we just have a little bit of logic down here and then if our move result equals the destination then we call the prop again so it just keeps spinning it'll spin the whole game I haven't added the functionality to turn it off yet. So when the game starts, it's called, it starts, and it just keeps going. And it doesn't stop. It runs the whole game. If you wanted to, I would imagine you could create a trigger and then call call it not with the spawn, but just call it through the trigger. And then if you hit the trigger again, you know, dispose of it or turn it off by changing the values. So you could just stop it by changing the speed to zero. So that would be one way to stop it. It wouldn't be that hard to put that in there. But this part isn't necessarily intuitive because it relies essentially on the SDK that is the verse code and it requires all this. This is the part that's not necessarily intuitive. Okay, so there's all that. So once that's done, we can just jump back into our Unreal Editor for Fortnite. We have our creative device here. We'll go ahead and drag it into the scene. And then we'll go to verse and build the verse code. And we don't get any errors. And then you down, you down here, you see the editables that we created in the code. And we can just put this to new blueprint, which is that thing right there. And then if you want to play with the speeds, you can do that here. The lower this value goes, the faster it goes. But once it goes into negative, it stops. So that's one way you could stop this is by just changing the value of that. So you could set a trigger that sets the speed to zero. And that would be one way to stop and start it by controlling the speed value. So there's all that. So all I'm gonna do now is just launch it and then I'll come back and we'll see if it works. Okay, I'm back, so let's give it a whirl and see if it works. Yep, it seems to be spinning. It's going kind of slow, but you can make it spin even faster so the material looks good everything looks good so well, anyway that's all i had for today take care have a great day and i will talk to you next time